Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel for another SSL Family Faith Sunday. Uh, this will be the first one I've actually got to record uh, this week and uh, give to you guys with some actual video. So hopefully you guys will enjoy uh, as we open the word together. I do apologize. I looked for a nice quiet place and quiet time to, uh, to shoot this and it is pouring rain out here in the greenhouse. So it's a little bit loud, but hopefully you'll be able to uh, hear everything okay. So Today we're going to open the word and start in the book of Ephesians. We're going to be in chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come man is that awesome a measurable power above all name today yesterday tomorrow and in all time to come his name is above all other names this is the real power the the definition of the real resurrection power of our god when we put our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior, when we are truly saved, this is the real power that we have access to, the real true power of God. So many times in this world, we hear people trying to discount this very truth of this very real power of God. We see it and they see it and people see the real power of God show up in their lives and other people's lives and yet they still try to discount what this means. They try to discount the real truth, the real word of God. The Bible tells us that this is how God has revealed himself to us through this word, but the world will tell us that these are just a collection of stories, things that people wrote that they might think are meaningful or they might think it maybe may apply to our lives, but how many times have we heard Oh, that, the, the Bible is old. That, that was written thousands of years ago. It doesn't apply to our lives now. You need to get with the times. We need to modernize. We need to, you know, do things in a different way. You know, this, things have changed. But in reality, we all know that things haven't really changed. The, the word and the, the truth that is in this book is for all time. The power of God is for all time. It's not just things that happened thousands of years ago. This is relevant to us right now. This entire book from front to back is relevant and it reveals the power of God from very beginning to the very end. It's all about the power of God and how it can be in our lives. We have access to this real power through our faith in Jesus Christ, through our salvation, through Jesus allowing us to be right with God again. We have access to this power in our life. It's not cheap tricks. This isn't fake things. This isn't something that just uh, was written about but doesn't really apply anymore. This is real power. We're going to look at uh, a guy today uh, in the book of Acts. So if you flip back to Acts uh, chapter 8, uh, called this guy's name is Simon the Magician. And if you've read about this, uh, this guy before, this is an interesting story, and uh, a lot can be taken from this. But uh, let's read through the first part of this here and, and see what... Uh, what Simon the Magician has, uh, has for us. So we're going to look at uh, Acts chapter 8, verses, uh, verse 9. But there was a man named Simon, who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, saying that he himself was somebody great. So here's this guy named Simon, and he's a, a magician or, or some sorcerer, and some versions of the Bible will talk about him. And he would go around town making a living off of magic tricks. You know, he would dazzle people with these tricks and uh, who knows what he did you know pulling coins from behind people's ears or uh, whatever it is that uh, that he did uh, hopefully something greater than that uh, maybe making things disappear uh, all these things and people just were amazed by this it says that he went around town amazing the people of Samaria saying that he himself was someone great in the next verse it says they all paid attention to him from the least to the greatest so though there was poor people in the street or maybe great people in some arena or hall somewhere where they pay tickets to come see this guy. Everybody thought this guy was something great. 
and they would say, this man is the power of God that is called great. They thought he had this great power of God. They thought that he was someone great. They thought that uh, the things he was doing were, were some you know, uh, bedazzling power that, uh, that, that only he had. They, they just didn't understand these magic tricks. They just thought he was, he was, uh, he was something great. And they paid attention to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So, a little bit of explanation here. Philip, a uh, follower of Jesus, apostle, comes out into the, uh, this area, Samaria, and he's preaching the gospel. Remember, the book of Acts is all about the early church, all about the the early followers of Jesus going out and spreading the good news of what Jesus did on the cross, what we are celebrating this weekend, what we are remembering through Good Friday and Easter, the sacrifice that Jesus made and what that means as we put our faith in him and confess him as our Lord. Philip's going around. He's preaching this gospel, this good news to people. He's telling people about it. And it says that they came to believe. In, in, uh, in Philip, as he preached the good news, they came to believe Philip in, in the message that he had about Jesus Christ. They were baptized, both men and women. So all these people that were you know, following Simon around thinking he was great, then they see the real power of God. They start to understand what Jesus did for them. And they believe and they were baptized. Both women. And then in, in verse 13 it says, Even Simon himself believed. And after being baptized, he continued with Philip. And seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. But we're going to learn a little bit about Simon here in a later verse. It says that Simon believed, but he didn't get it. Simon didn't understand because like many of us, he saw something. He saw Jesus being preached. He, he saw this power that, that Philip brought you know, through the power of Jesus in him. And he was searching for God. He was searching for the power of God. And he, he was looking for it. But what he was really looking for was himself. And what Simon the magician was really looking out for was himself. He wasn't looking for the power of God. He was looking to use that power in his magic tricks. How could he get some of that? How could he get a little bit of this wondrous thing? Now that everybody's believing in this... You know, maybe they, weren't, maybe they weren't so amazed by Simon anymore. He wanted to know what this power was and how could he get it. And he says he was amazed. He's following now. He's going along with Philip. He's like, I got to figure this out. I got to figure out how they're doing this because I want that. I got to figure out how I can take what they're doing and incorporate that into my act, into my life, and so that I can gain for myself. He just didn't get it. Simon just didn't get it. All he wanted was to fit God into his life. He didn't want to fit his life into God's. He wanted to take what he could get and make himself happy and probably richer in, in the process. But like many of us, we're looking for God or maybe looking for churches as uh, my wife and I have uh, done recently. Uh, we have been visiting a lot of local churches in this area and looking for, uh, for a home. A home church in, in our community where we can get plugged in and, and where we can uh, uh, be part of the real power of God and how we can contribute to that and our calling. But like many of us, you know, it's very easy to want to look not for God's power, but uh, how can churches conform to our needs, right? How can the body of Christ in, in areas, how can they make us happy? There's no perfect church out there, but what do we do when we come into churches and we start to maybe look around? Maybe you've been attending a church for a long time, or maybe you're, you know, you, you've recently gone through this, this, uh, this searching and looking. What do we do? We want to go to the maybe the, the biggest, prettiest church. Oh, uh, this church is close. It's convenient for me. I go to this church. Why do you go there? Uh, because it's convenient. It's real close by. Oh, yeah, why do you go to this church? Oh, they have a really nice uh, small group that I like. Okay. Maybe they have a knitting club. Maybe they have a, a really good youth program. Maybe your kids were happy there. Maybe they have comfortable seats. Maybe they have the music that you really like. We take the church and we take these, what the church is supposed to be, 
a, a, an avenue and a vessel for the power of Jesus Christ to salvations to occur. And what do we do? We cheapen it. We, we, we turn it into cheap tricks, things that, what can I pick out of this church that will meet my needs and fulfill whatever it is that I need? And while all those things are great, there's nothing wrong with great children's programs and great worship ministries and great small groups and great knitting clubs and whatever else it is in a church. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. But that is not what we are looking for in a, in a church. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the real power of the risen Jesus Christ. We're looking for the truth. We're looking for people to come to know Jesus and understand truly that their eternity is in heaven with God. You know, the knitting circle or the knitting club's not going to get that for anybody. Now, there's nothing wrong with good fellowship and discipleship and all those things are very important. The Bible tells us that. But just like Simon, we can very easily cheapen these things and miss the mark and miss the point. Many of us and many of you out there have gone to church all your life and maybe still don't understand. Maybe you've gone to a church because that's where your parents went. That's where your family went. Maybe that's where your husband or your wife went. Maybe you go to a church and you, you punch in on Sunday and you punch out for the rest of the week. Maybe do you look one way on Sunday and maybe the whole rest of the week look a different way. Sometimes we miss the mark. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we don't even understand like Simon. He didn't understand. He wasn't doing anything intentionally wrong. He thought he, he, thought he believed. It says here that he believed. He thought he believed. But he didn't get it. He didn't understand. He was thinking of himself. And he wasn't thinking of God's power. And he wasn't thinking of how God was going to transform him. He was thinking about what can I get to further my, my magic act here. Further on in the story, in uh, verse 18, so we're still in Acts, Acts uh, chapter 8, verse 18. Uh, we're going to read verses 18 and 19. Now this is later on. So Simon's following uh, Philip around now. It says, Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given... Through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that anyone whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. So at this time, you'll see this in other, uh, other uh, accounts here in, in Acts of the apostles or sometimes elders, uh, the laying on of hands. So they'll, uh, maybe a, a believer, someone has uh, come to understand uh, Jesus as their Savior and confess them as Lord and they are a, a new a believer in Christ and they'll lay their hands on them and pray over them and the Holy Spirit will come upon them it says Simon sees them doing this and he says I want that power how can I get some of that I want to be able to do that I want to go around town probably charging people a little bit of money here and there so that I can lay my hands on them and bring the Holy Spirit in that's what he thinks he just doesn't get it he doesn't think it's real power of God he thinks it's some cheap trick that he can buy. He just doesn't understand. He was witnessing the real power of God, the real Holy Spirit of the real living God coming upon these people and living inside of them. It says in the Bible that when we believe in Jesus Christ, that a helper, the Holy Spirit, will come to reside in us. And he will teach us and, and help to reveal the Word and translate the things of God in our lives and also help to convict us of sin, which sometimes uh, the whole other thing can be uncomfortable. Simon sees this and he just thinks it's some kind of trick. He thinks it's some kind of great thing that he's doing and uh, he wants to buy it. This book is absolutely filled with the real power of God from the very beginning in Genesis all the way through to Revelation. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into the fiery furnace and they stand there in the fire and they walk out unscathed. They're Daniel and the lion's den. All of the miracles of Jesus turning water into wine and healing the paralytic and healing the blind and healing the, the, uh, the, the paralyzed and, and the leprosy and, and all these things. All of these real miracles. Raising Lazarus from the dead. They, they just continue and continue. These are real accounts of the real power of God. Simon was witnessing that, and he just didn't get it. Sometimes we don't understand either. Sometimes it's, you know, we go through life and, and, and it's hard to see it around us. It's hard to see. Sometimes it's easier to see when we look back. We look back on our life and we can say, man, that was God working. Sometimes it's, it's hard to see it when we're, when we're in the middle of it. Just like Simon. Sometimes we don't get it. 
And that's totally understandable. But through faith, through our faith in Jesus and through faith in that real power, that we know that these aren't just cheap tricks and old stories that were meaningful thousands of years ago, that these are real meaningful things right here today that are happening in our life. And through belief and faith in Jesus, that real power can can do real things in our lives. And sometimes it's hard to, to grasp that until it happens. And I could tell you story after story of God showing up in my life, especially as I look back over the last five years. I've talked about this in, in other sermons that uh, maybe you guys have heard. Um, I, I've uh, shared our testimony, Lisa and I, and my wife and I's testimony many times, but to give you the, the, the high-level overview Lisa and I have been married for uh, about eight years, and our marriage started off a complete mess. It was upside down and flipped all over the place, and God wasn't at the center of it. And only through our faith in Him, year after year, and I'm not saying we've got it all figured out, guys, but I just, again, looking back, I can see how God has worked some real things and brought my marriage from, I, I'm going to say, close to destruction to something amazing to behold. Our lives, Lisa and I's lives, we've gone through job losses, moves, church changes, all kinds of different struggles in our lives, health struggles, you know, financial struggles. God has led us through and the closer that we've gotten to Him, the, the more we have been able to see the amazing real power of God show up in our lives. That same real power, this is no trick. This is no, nothing that we can purchase. This is something real and true. And only if we can only put our faith and trust in Him, that's when we start to see that work. That's when we start to see that real power take place. That's when we start to see those things revealed in our lives. And it is amazing to behold. Acts 8.20 So Simon He's offered to purchase this power. How much does, will this cost for you to teach me this power of laying your hands on and bringing the Holy Spirit into these people? How, how can I buy this? How much does it cost? But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. There's a whole lot that Peter just said to him. May your silver perish with you. He just revealed that Simon didn't understand and that Simon didn't truly believe and put his faith in Jesus Christ. He didn't get it. And that Simon was perishing. Not just perishing in this world, but eternal perishing. Peter was saying to him, let your money perish with you because you don't get it. You haven't figured it out yet. That You can't buy this power. And I can tell you that in this world, there are many people, there are so many people in this world that think that they can buy their way into heaven through so many different ways. The Bible says that our works are like dirty rags. God tells us that there is nothing that is righteous before Him. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we can be right with God. It's only through our faith. Confess Him as Lord and you will be saved. That is the only way no one gets to the Father except through the Son. But a lot of people have been led astray. There's a lot of false teaching out there. There's a lot of false doctrine out there that doesn't come from this. There's a lot of churches out there, unfortunately, that are sharing this message. That you can work your way into heaven. That if you only do good enough, that if you only keep doing good and keep doing good, that if you give enough money or if you help enough needy people, if you have a, a pure heart and you are good to people, how many times have we all heard someone say, you know, if you ask someone, hey, do you, do you uh, believe in God? They may say yes. Do you believe that you're going to heaven? Well, yes. Well, why? Because I'm a good person. I've heard it a, a, so many times from friends, from family, from people that we love, that we, that we know, they think that not because this tells them, not because the real truth says that, but because the world will tell us if you're just a good person. That's all you need to do. Just give money to the church, give money to the needy. You've got to show, you've got to go to church on Sundays. If you go to church every Sunday and you're a good person, you're in. It's not the way it works. 
We can't purchase the salvation of Jesus Christ with money. We can't purchase the real power of God with money, with good works, with good things. We can't do enough to earn our way into heaven, to earn our way into the good grace of God and witness the real power in our life. It's only and only through faith in Jesus Christ that we get to witness the real, true, living power today in our lives, the power to heal, the power to overcome the challenges, the health problems, the marital problems, the power to resurrect your marriage from divorce, from destruction, the power to take your family and knit it back together again as you put your faith in Him, the real power to do real things in this world, the power to mend and repair that relationship with your husband or your wife or your brother or your sister or your mom or your dad or your friends. The power to heal you spiritually. The power to heal you mentally. The power to heal you physically. Real healing. Real miracles. Jesus has the power above all things. I'm not saying that you believe in Jesus and just like that, like a magic trick, that your life will be immediately healed and better. I'm not saying that belief in Jesus brings immediate you know, healing and, and, and correction to every problem that you've ever had. What I'm telling you is that the power of God is real in your life. And through His will and His plan, He reveals to us His power. And He can heal and He can resurrect your marriage, and He can save you from addiction, and He can save you from struggles in your life. We see the real power that God has, and it's fitting that Easter is what we celebrate today and this weekend, that we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made, that He died on the cross, that He bared the burden of all of our sin, suffered and died so that we could live and so that we could witness and have faith in God's real power. And as Jesus dies on the cross, we, we celebrate on Easter the real power of God resurrecting Him from the dead. We get to see that real power in His resurrection that even He defeats death we need to find God's real power through faith in Him and through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Through a relationship with Him, a real relationship with God. It says He's knocking on the door. Revelation tells us that He is knocking on the door and all we have to do is open the door and let Him in. He wants to be in our life. He wants to be in your life. All you have to do is let Him in. Allow Him to begin to transform your life through true and real faith in Him. We need to communicate with God and that means prayer. And that means talking to Him and that means listening to Him. It's not about what we want. It's not about taking God and bending Him to our will and our ways. It's about opening ourselves up to what He wants to do in our life and allowing Him to do that. Now that is real power that we can witness through our faith in Jesus. Let's take a few moments and pray together. Dear Father, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, serve you. Lord, as we celebrate Easter this weekend, as we remember what you did on the cross, Lord, I ask that so many people around the world come to know you that they come to understand the real power that you have in their lives. That no matter what struggle they're going through, no matter what they're facing in their life, that the eternal salvation that you offer them through the real power that you have is what it's all about, Lord. It's not just about this life. You have real power in this life and the next, Lord, and the next is a long time. Lord, I ask that you be with all of us, all those listening and watching today. I ask that you be with us. 
I ask that you show up in our lives, Lord. I don't know what struggle everyone's going through. I don't know what's going on in everyone's life. I don't know what health problems. I don't know what marital problems, relationship problems, drug problems, addiction problems. I don't know what's going on, Lord, in everyone's life. But you know. And I ask that you pull them close to you today and show up in their lives and show up in mine, Lord. Continue to be with us all, each in our own ways. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody.